Our next two guests have very different views on the topic of illegal immigration. Joining me now in tonight's face-off, Congressman Tom Tancredo of Colorado, who says illegal aliens not only threaten the nation as a whole, but harm minority groups most of all, in point of fact. On the other side of this issue is Ben Johnson. He's the director of the Immigration Policy Center. He says this economy needs immigrant workers, even if they are illegal. Gentlemen, welcome to you both. Thank you. Thank you, let Lou. Me, it's good to be here. Let me start with you, Ben, on this issue. Eight to 12 million illegal aliens. The president has put forward a proposal. Uh, Senator Daschle, uh, Senator Hagel have put forward proposals. Others, Congressman Tom Tancredo has put forward proposals. Uh, there are a host of them. But the essence, it seems, uh, to me at least, is first define the security at the border and make that determination, secure the borders. Does that make sense to you? It does. There seems to be universal agreement that the current immigration system is broken and people from all across the political spectrum are uh, admitting that at this point and trying to find legislative proposals that will address the problems that the current immigration faces. Uh, Congressman, your thoughts? Well, I'm really glad to hear that. I, I'm glad to hear that people from all perspectives are finally settling on the fact that we've got a problem on our borders. But I take issue with the idea that there's something wrong with the law. You know, this, I hear this a lot. The law is broken. Lou, there's nothing wrong with the law. The law is clear. It says people who come into this country without our permission violate the law and need to be deported. It says that people who are here illegally and get hired um, are also, I mean, the people who hire those folks are also breaking the law. We have, there's nothing wrong with those laws. There's simply been something wrong with our willingness to enforce them. Hey, ben, your thoughts? Well, I, that's just, that's not the case. The, I mean, our immigration system isn't broken because people don't want to enforce them. Our Im immigration system is broken because it doesn't respond to the needs of employers and families in the United States. Experts can disagree about what's the exact number of foreign workers that companies legitimately need to fill jobs that U.S. workers won't do, but everybody agrees that that number is above 5,000, and yet in the current immigration system, we only allow 5,000 unskilled workers into the United States every year to get, to get a green card. Well, so the reality is, is that that's just is completely inconsistent with the legitimate needs that, fam that, that employers have. And, and the other point is also on the family note, which is that it's great to talk about, you know, we respect legal immigrants and, and we respect uh, their, their abiding by the law. But the fact of the matter is, is that legal immigrants have to wait between five and seven years before they can be legally joined with their spouses and children in the United States. So that puts enormous pressure on the, on the families of legal immigrants. And those are the reasons that we have undocumented immigration. I think the that, absence I think of that, sufficient uh, legal avenues for employers and the absence of sufficient reasonable uh, ways for families to be united in the United States. I think that Ben is living in a different country than I am. It's certainly maybe Mexico that has only 5,000 people coming in annually. They allow in annually to, to work. Legal. But, we only allow uh, 5,000 let, legal let, Let's look at the, oh, legally. Well, how about this? 1,400,000 legal immigrants coming into this country every year. How about 65,000? It has been up to 195,000 a year on H-1B visas every year. How many hundreds of thousands on people here, here on L-1 visas? They're all legal. It's way above 5,000. It's in the millions but who come into this. Now wait a minute. Who come into this country? Who can come in and work? A one million four hundred thousand legal immigrants. Most of them, frankly, unskilled and <clears throat> low wage workers. But they can come in and do come in every single year. Yeah. They can also provide the labor to which you refer. They come in legally. Look, now why do we not? Why do we need to also have about another one million to one and a half million people coming across our borders illegally just to satisfy the greed? for cheap labor. Let, it is, it is of course, me. that greed that, that, that allows us to ha maintain a porous border. We're, we're not even talking Tom, about the need, Ben, just a moment, if I, if I may ask. Uh, let me pose this question, because we're, uh, it seems curious that we have a, a broad spectrum of interests that have allied uh, behind open borders, if you will, illegal immigration. I'm asking this of both of you. Uh, uh, Congressman uh, Tancredo is a Republican, uh, a conservative. We have a group of conservatives in this country, a group of liberals in this country, businesses and labor that are suddenly massively enthused about having open borders, particularly to the South, uh, and not enforcing immigration laws. I've heard, I've heard people say it's because we need illegal aliens to uh, support the baby boomers who are about to retire in the Social Security system. 
because we need to drive our housing industry, because there are jobs that Americans don't want. How is it that we're seeing this sort of neo, from everything from neoconservative to multicultural uh, liberals, if you will, uh, moving toward each other on this issue of open borders and, and effectively uh, setting policy uh, in the absence of enforcement of immigration laws? And I, I'll start with you, Ben. Well, I don't see anybody moving towards open borders. The choice doesn't have to be between open borders and militarized borders. What? No, 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 no. I, wait, 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 wait. Let's not. Let's not. I, I respect you enough to not set up a straw man or an artificial choice. I haven't suggested that. No, but to suggest that open borders is the proposal. Uh, I think is a mischaracterization of, of what immigration reform, at least as it's being played out by most of the people that are introducing legislation mm -hmm. in the Congress, is about. And, and the idea is to create a smart immigration system, create smart borders where we can help tell the difference between legitimate travelers and terrorists, help create a smart immigration system so that we can allow employers access to the workers that they legitimately need, right, and, and, and make sure that there are wage protections in place and make sure that they're not replacing workers. Let's get off the issue of how many and focus more on why they're coming and the conditions that they're working in in the United States. Well, the reason the they're coming, we know quite clearly. There is abundant yeah. opportunity and wealth in this country, and there is poverty uh, in Mexico principally, uh, which is the principal source of illegal aliens across the southern border. I mean, but there's we, no mystery there, and and well, overpopulation. We There's have a, uh, what we have uh, is a. I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, Congress. I'm sorry. Uh, if you're not done, I'll, I'll wait. I'm done. But uh, it, what we have here is a convergence. I, I call it the perfect storm, in a way, of interest groups converging on this whole issue. It's the Democratic Party that sees massive immigration into the country, both legal and illegal, as a source of potential voters. It is the Republican Party that sees that same massive immigration as a, as a source of cheap labor. It's the president that sees immigration as a wedge issue he wants to use in the next campaign. That's a, that is a perfect storm, and it's one reason why we can't get anything done. And in terms of yeah. whether or not we're talking about porous border, open borders, let me tell you, you can put up all of the, you can, you can increase the, the ability, the technological ability for us to check people coming through those, those uh, ports of entry all day long. And you're, as long as you refuse to actually secure the border, it won't mean a thing because they Let's simply get, come around it. Ben Johnson, you get the very last word here. We have 10 times as many Border Patrol agents as we did 10 years ago. We spend five times as much money on border enforcement as we did 10 years ago. And what do we have to show for it? We have more illegal immigration, more deaths at the border, and an increase in the business of human smuggling. You can't solve the problem of undocumented immigration by pouring more money into a failed system. You've got to recognize that the current immigration system needs to be reformed, and that includes legal avenues for the workers and families who are using the immigration system, and it includes a well-regulated, controlled system that ensures that the people that are coming here are doing so under conditions where they're not taking U.S. jobs and they're not being exploited when they get here. There's universal agreement about that. You just can't continue to pour good money after bad trying to enforce a failed system. Ben Johnson. Congressman Tom Tom Credo, we thank you very much, gentlemen, for being Pleasure, here. Pleasure, Lou. Thank oh, I, Congressman, I have to ask you one thing. Yes, sir. Uh, this, <laughs> I, are you interested in running for the U.S. Senate from the state of Colorado? <laughs> um, next question. <laughs> That's it. That's the only question. That's the only question? Well, you bet I'm interested in doing that. Uh, lot of, uh, a lot of dominoes have to fall yet until we really figure out where we are in this process. The, the present right. senator from the state of Colorado uh, has just made an announcement right. that we all have to digest. Senator Ben Nighthorse Campbell.